Hey, what's up? Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss the 2002 cult classic film Spider-Man. This is directed by Sam Raimi, starring our one and only beautiful Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, Dave Franco, Willem Dafoe, a uh, bunch of other people are in this. This is one of Octavia Spencer's, excuse me, correction. <clears throat> this is one of Academy Award, Oscar Award winning actress Octavia Spencer. This is one of her first films when she first started out acting. I am so happy to know this. She's the, like, the registrar, registrar for um, the wrestling match. And she's telling uh, Peter Parker, a.k.a. Tommy McGuire, a.k.a. Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, um, that he, he has to be in the ring for three minutes and, you know, he's going to die. They're not liable for his death. Things like that, right? Great. So this is the movie that started it all. I mean, yeah, we have 2000s X-Men, but that's a Fox property, right? And then Spider-Man is a Sony property at this point in the early 2000s. But why I say started it all is because Spidey is a web slinging, jumping from building to building, you know, a lot of cinematography has to go into this. And in the, you know, late 60s, early 70s, there wasn't that much representation of a live action spider-man aside from like the japanese spider-man japanese spider-man like had live action films in the 70s where these guys were crawling up buildings and all these crazy crazy stunts um amazing but like web slinging and swinging wasn't really a thing captured on film until 2002's spider-man because the technology finally existed so another fun fact 156 takes it took for toby to catch um mj's lunch on the tray because that was not CGI. That was Toby trying 156 times. I would, I would have, I don't know what I would have done. It would have been one of those like champion moments where like your arms go straight up and you just scream, yes, yes, because you did it. You finally did it. Um, so fun facts of that. So this is, this is a great movie. This is my, my childhood. I was 12 years old when I saw this. My brother was 10 when he saw it, when we saw this. Um, we first saw this for a friend's birthday party whatever summer this came out so summer 2002 2002 um it was a group of us we all went um with our parents because you know we're young children um also traded pg-13 so we all were under 13 technically so of course we needed a child uh, a parent but um we were all just like wow and wow and like danny elfman does the music and like it's just so incredible that spider-man theme that danny elfman does um it's so it's gonna be so hard, so hard judging who's the better Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, or Tom Holland, because it's just three different takes on Spider-Man. So I'm just very happy that we now acknowledge that there's three different universes of Spider-Man. Um, that each universe has its own Spider-Man. So yeah, so this film we are presented. Uh, Peter Parker gets his spider bite. Uncle Ben dies. Um, and a carjacking after this guy robbed the wrestling place and you know peter let the guy go because the guy who was doing the organization you know took money away from peter's winnings so that was hard aunt may is like really old and british which is funny but like very nice heart to hearts toby mcguire's transformation of like skinny dork to like you know twonk um pretty impressive so I like the glasses scene when he takes his glasses and then he, it's like blurry when he puts this on him and then it's clear when he takes them off. I love that camera shot. That was a cool camera shot. I want to know how they did that. Um, Dave Franco was Harry Osborn. Was, it was, it's just really cool. So at first you know, time seeing Harry, seeing Dave like do anything, aside from Freaks and Geeks, um, that was that was an early uh, uh, show of his. But like, this was the first thing I ever saw him in. And this was the first thing, no, Pleasantville was the first thing I ever saw Tobey Maguire in. That was 96, I think, with Reese Witherspoon and Paul Walker. We just talked about that. So this movie's cool because you have um, Norman Osborn becoming, I was going to say Green Lantern, the Green Goblin. You have the Green Goblin and Spidey scenes. And, you know, Green Goblin is, is um, one of the arch nemeses of Spider-Man. You know, Green Goblin, Doc Ock, Venom. You always have, like, those three in, like, the top three tier of... Uh, villains for spidey so it's it's cool seeing it's cool seeing him the first iteration 
Willem Dafoe's iteration on screen. Also, the fact that the costume department has the Green Goblin in Adidas, pretty cool as well. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, I love that New York feel to it. Like, you have all the New Yorkers talking in the New York accent, and no, they don't actually talk like that. Talk. Okay. Talk. T A W K. So all the L's are W's. Talk. Walk in. Walk. Walk. Yeah. Okay. I got it. So uh, I, I think it's it's also important to note that this is a Thanksgiving film. This starts out May of uh, their senior year, graduation. Um, summer kind of went really quick. The fall came by because it's referenced Peter's in college and he has a job and he's taking pictures of Spider-Man and, you know, he has an apartment with Harry and Harry's now dating MJ and then they break up. Um, but then MJ starts to like Peter because Peter's liked her since he was six years old. But uh, there's a big blowout between her, her, <clears throat> Norman and Harry on Thanksgiving. Literally, it's, it's on Thanksgiving. He's about to carve the turkey. It's Thanksgiving. Um... And then we go a little bit after Thanksgiving, but it's really, we don't hit Christmas. We don't have a Spider-Man Christmas film yet. That's what No Way Home, Spider-Man No Way Home, Tom Holland's Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be about. Christmas. I'm very excited to see a Christmas Spidey because we have a Christmas Spider-Man song in Spider, um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. We do have a Christmas song, but yeah. So in the end of this film, Norman Osborn is, di is dead. He is impaled by his own glider. Um, he knows Peter Parker's identity. Mary Jane doesn't know just yet. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how Green Goblin and Tobey Maguire's Peter Parker interacts in Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange's Multiverse of Madness, as well as Spider-Man Far From Home. Because we all, we all know that all the villains are coming back for something, but How? How are the villains coming back for something? And I'm going to say this every time we talk about a Spider-Man movie because we got four more to talk about. But, like, I'm so curious, so curious how the end of WandaVision is going to be leading into Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, which is also going to be a part of Loki's TV show, which is also going to be a part of Spider-Man uh, No Way Home. I am so excited. Bring on Marvel Phase 4. We can do this. Mucho mahalo.